Well, welcome everybody to uh, another event in the Contemporary Arts Society for Wales uh, programme of, uh, of evening public talks and uh, in this case interviews. And I'm very pleased to welcome Nigel Prince, the director of Artis Mundi to join us for, for this evening's uh, uh, discussion about Artis Mundi. Um, if you could have your cameras off, that would be a good thing if you're watching on Zoom and there'll be an opportunity later to come back and ask questions. Uh, you can tell me through the chat function on the bottom of your Zoom screen if you're on Zoom, uh, if you'd like to ask a question and you can either put a question in the chat for me to, to, to weave into the conversation with Nigel or uh, towards the end, we'll open up the questions and uh, you, can, you can come on uh, and ask the question directly yourself. Um, so this is a, 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 an evening about Artis Mundi 9, um, six artists from around the world coming to Cardiff um, to, to, to show their work in the Artis Mundi International Art Competition. And this is a kind of preview of the preview because uh, Artis Mundi was supposed to be shown uh, at the end of last year, but uh, for reasons that we're all too familiar with, it's had to get pushed back. And in fact, uh, it's previewing very shortly. And Nigel, in a couple of days time? Uh, from March 15th. Uh, March we'll 15th. It's the official online launch. Right, so we're, we're way ahead here. The Contemporary Arts Society for Wales uh, members and others joining us getting a, an insight into the exhibition before it goes online. Um, Artis Mundi is a biennial. Uh, it was started in 2004. The first exhibition was in 2004. It had a 40,000 pound prize, which it still has. Uh, and in 2004, it was possibly the largest art prize in the world. Um, supported by the Welsh Government, by the Arts Council of Wales, by the Colwinston Trust, and by uh, a number of others, including a very small but significant contribution from the Contemporary Arts Society for Wales. Um, I remember that some of the discussions as Artis Mundi was sort of coming to fruition back in 2004, and there was a, there was a first name originally, which was the Humanitas Prize, uh, with a view that it was going to be very much focused on the idea of the human figure. Um, but that evolved quite quickly into a rubric, which I think is still uh, the case now, of um, uh, of um, uh, supporting international contemporary visual artists whose work engages with social reality and lived experience. Uh, I'm just dithering because I'm finding my right slide. Uh, this was uh, uh, an image from the first exhibition in 2004. And many people will remember the um, amazing installation of uh, the film by Bedwy Williams in 2016, which was a, uh, a very uh, impressive show that year. So we have with us Nigel, uh, Nigel Prince. Um, Nigel grew up in Staffordshire. He went to School of Art in Liverpool in the 1980s. Uh, he is an artist himself and a writer and a curator and he taught at Birmingham's uh, Institute of Art and Design um, and then worked in various roles with Tate, with the Arts Council of England, as the director of the Icon Gallery in Birmingham and uh, the director of uh, uh, the Contemporary Art Gallery in Vancouver. Uh, so he's traveled around. And, and my first question for Nigel is, um, what made you choose to come back to Britain and to Artis Mundi in particular from Vancouver, which everybody says is one of the most livable cities in the world. <laughs> um, well, f first of all, I'd just like to express thanks uh, on behalf of myself um, and, and the whole of the Artis Mundi team for, um, for the opportunity this evening, but also to the continuing support of CASU it, uh, as one of our long-standing supporters uh, it, it, it genuinely makes makes all the difference to um, to, to, to what we're what we're able to achieve um, on, on successive iterations 
Uh, I should also say I was the curator at PyCon, not, not the director. Uh, Jonathan is, is still the current, uh, current director, uh, Jonathan Watkins. Uh, so Vancouver, yeah. I, um, I, well, I'd been in Vancouver for, for, for nine years as the executive director at CAG, as it's affectionately known. Um, and I suppose it, the opportunity at Artist Monday came at a time when, um, like a lot of things in life, you, you know, you arrive at a point where you're thinking, what, what's the next thing going to be? Um, I'm sort of feeling ready for, for, for a, new, a new adventure. Um, and specifically for Artist Mundi, um, I, was, I, was, I was interested in moving back to Europe. Um, I mean, as, as Peter has said, I was born and brought up in the UK. Uh, and there was something about uh, having spent really valuable and wonderful time in Vancouver, great many friends and continuing friends uh, there be before I went and, and, and subs subsequently while I worked there. But there was something about returning to, to Europe that, that was attractive to me for a variety of reasons, professionally and, um, and personally. Um, and when I was approached about Artist Monday and told of the opportunity that had arisen with Karen, um, Karen moving uh, back to Glyn Viv, um, and so it was, it was an interesting proposition, given that Artist Mundi, compared to the rest of my career, was not a gallery or a museum building um, and was not about a programme that, uh, in, in, in the most conventional sense, uh, as a, a revolving programme of, uh, of, of exhibition making, plus all the other aspects that, that come with that. So there was something about the, the very nature of Artist Mundi uh, being a biennial event, but also then with further digging in terms of its, um, all the other aspects of its programming that were, that were a little bit buried um, and didn't quite have the same visibility as the biennial exhibition and the, the prize. But there was something very much about that connectivity that that um, those co-creative partnerships, those long-standing relationships with communities, that the the sort of um, a community-based work that that is something maybe it goes back within my own career within within education as well that that chimes very importantly to to me in terms of the the. Um, the social and, and civic role that cultural organizations play. And so there was something about that balance between things that, 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 that was attractive. Um, I, I had some previous connections a little with Cardiff, you know, done a little bit of teaching at the art school there, uh, certain artists in town I was friendly with, um, so there was there was there was something there, you know. I wasn't come sort of completely cold to to the scene. Um, it's interesting that you, you, but there's you something mentioned about Marcus Mundy per se. I think that um, in in many ways, I think it's 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 still an evolving set of ideas and circumstances, and to be to play a role within its next phase of development was. Uh, you know, an exciting opportunity. It's interesting that you you mentioned that it's it's not a venue, but a, a, a biennial that um, that sort of floats between venues in a sense. And it's uh, for those who don't yet know, it's going to be in is in it is installed, um, ready to open in uh, National Museum Cardiff and G thirty nine and Chapter. Um, so three different venues. Uh, sharing the responsibility of, and, sh and sharing the installations of these different, very different artists uh, from one another. Um, quite important, I suppose, to have uh, spaces where uh, artworks don't clash with one another and don't don't uh, don't cross too much. You can you can create separate spaces for these six separate artists. Can you tell us a bit about? Um, how Artist Mundi is run and what the process is of, of selecting those artists who appear? Yeah, it's um, 
I mean, there's something about the idea of partnership and collaboration, which is sort of intrinsic to the DNA of the organization. And I think those people who, 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 who know me well, um, there's something about that way of working that is particularly appealing um, because there's a range and diversity of different spaces to, 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 to partner with. Um, but Artist Monday is open nomination. Anyone can nominate an artist. Um, I think for Artist Monday 9, it's something like we had about seven, 800 nominations uh, from something like ooh, 70, 70 different countries, I think it is. Um, so it's an open nomination. Um, and then the process is a little bit of internal sifting because obviously I might, not me personally, but you know, a, a person might nominate one artist and, and, and that might be duplicate, have numbers of nominations of a, a particular artist by a number of different individuals. So that's sifted through to sort of group, group things together. And um, that, then those go forward to a jury that we appoint. And, and in fact, for Artist Monday 9, I, one of the first things I did is change the, the nature of that, that jurying process. Previously, it had been um, a case of a, a number of people, four or five people would, would look at the full nomination list and whittle that down to a short list and that was their job done. And then a separate, uh, a separate jury of individuals would be, would be put together to, to make the award of the prize. Um, having been on that side of the fence uh, and been on, on juries uh, in Canada, I was on the Soviet Art Award, which is sort of the equivalent of the Turner Prize here in the UK, in Canada. Um, it, it seemed a rather strange situation to have somebody only complete part of that, that process. Uh, and so actually it was just, just, just before I formally started, I, I reached out to the, to the three jurors, Rachel, Elvira and Cosmin, uh, and asked if they would welcome the idea that there would be a, a change to their, the immediate um, role in which they'd been in, invited in the first place, to which they were, it made, it made sense to them. So, you know, consequently, it makes sense to everyone, I think. Um, so did you find a lot of surprises coming in when you were, uh, when you, when you were getting the, the initial uh, nominations? You know, is it like unwrapping Christmas presents that you weren't expecting? <laughs> is, it, is it more like um, sort of seeing, seeing the same old, same old? No, it's. Um, I mean, there, there, there were a number. There are a number of artists who I um, who I know personally, and uh, um, I think they've been nominated nominated prior to the announcement that I was going to be the new director. Um, I actually met somebody in Canada, an, an artist in Canada, who, when they were introduced, and I said I was moving on back to the UK to Artist Monday, they were like, "Oh, wow," because they knew. <laughs> They'd, they'd been gone. They'd been put forward. Um, also, the range of nominators, um, where the nominations come from, the individuals. That was that's particularly interesting because it's not just art world people. It's people from uh, contemporary film world, or from music, or from theatre. So the the range and and breadth of individuals who play the role of nominators, but also the 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 artists who are nominated it, it, it becomes interesting to see because there are certain individuals you know whose whose practice sort of operates between or or, or overlaps between a strict idea of visual art and filmmaking for example or a strict idea of visual art and uh, perfor uh, performance or in, or moving into into theater and so that 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 cross fertilization is also sort of interesting to, to 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 see, and also the you know the range, the reach of uh, of where artists are living and working. That's that was very reassuring to see. Uh, I think if you like the history of Artist Monday and its uh, and its legacies in terms of uh, oh, uh, the, the broader awareness around the around the world was. Was, was also reassuring to see that, that, that the, the word is out there, you know, the, the messaging is out there. Did you already know uh, 
something about the work of all the six people who've actually ended up being finalists or were some of those surprises to you? Um, by and large, uh, I, I was aware of all of the artists, but to, to differing degrees. Some I was much more familiar with than, 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 than others. Um, and so the conversation um, uh, uh, around the shortlist with the, with, with the, with the jurors was, was a very sort of wide ranging, far reaching uh, conversation. And they'd asked me for a number of, not specifically, are you looking for a certain kind of work or a certain kind of way of working? But they, they'd asked me slightly broader questions, I suppose, as the incoming director in terms of you know, the, the, the broader vision that I was going to be bringing into the post and how this is the first iteration under my, um, under my leadership, how that would, would, that, would that be setting a particular tone or, or were, were, the, were the ways of, of, of thinking about uh, contemporary existence and the and the art world within that contemporary world what you know the the kind of issues and ideas that we're we're all we're all living through and, and, and thinking about that's probably a good point at which um uh, to break into some images of the the first three artists and for you to to tell us about those uh, first three artists if you don't mind certainly um well the i'm uh what what, what we've done is put together some a short presentation. Uh, there's around about five, five or six images for, for each of the artists. And um, so that it doesn't sort of completely pull the punch uh, when, when it, uh, for, for, for March, what, what you'll see primarily is, uh, is is images of uh, installation in progress and works in various state stages of being um, of, 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 of being of being installed uh, either at uh, national museum or at uh, or, or at chapter. Presumably, it's been quite a tricky business um, dealing with uh, the installation of work from many different countries and. Um, uh, and hosting artists and um, transporting work during a pandemic. I mean, it, yes, I was um, there, or, um, or or just challenges to be overcome. Uh, well, challenges to be overcome. Uh, there's there's all sorts of pragmatic and practical things. In fact, I, I was uh, be, being interviewed for a for, for a piece by a journalist today, specifically about working through uh, you know putting on an exhibition like. Artist Monday through with through through the uh, through the obstacles of uh, of both COVID and um, and 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 of Brexit and the the types of things that that throws up be it financial practical um, yeah all, all, all of those sorts of considerations but colleagues and at at, at the venues uh, are 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 being great. Uh, just enabling us to 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 get through this this you know to get the work on the walls and in the spaces uh, under these incredible extraordinary circumstances um, and importantly to the the artists in terms of how a very different kind of way of working and engagement for them not physically being alongside us in the space and I mean first and foremost that camaraderie is it, and and the the sort of shorthand of, uh, of of working alongside each other in a very immediate way is 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 one that is uh, is a loss that is, uh, is 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 a shame not to uh, not to have them present because having 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 met all six of them they're they're just great interesting people to be having conversations with. So where does uh, Ferrelli Bias's work come from? So Firale Baez, she's uh, originally, uh, she lives and works in New York, uh, although she's born in the Dominican Republic. And uh, she's a painter. So if we go on to the, the first slide of uh, Firale's, this is uh, an image of her studio. Uh, I was there around about this time last year, which seems like a completely different world. 
and I thought this 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 this, this is interesting. You know, this is like very much a behind the scenes image that I was allowed to take um, to give you an idea of where where the work uh, where the work is made is is made. So if we go to the next, and then here we have uh, the first of a, a, a number of new works that, that Ferrelay has made, especially for the show. Uh, there are four major new pieces by her. Um, there are three large scale paintings. This, this one, for example, is uh, just shy of three and a half meters in width, gives you an idea of scale. Uh, without wishing to sound flippant, it also enables social distancing to be maintained when it's, uh, when it's hung with a, a tech either, either side. Um, but for this, this is very typical of, uh, of, of, of three large scale paintings that, 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 that are, are, are in the, are in the show, um, all completed, uh, in, in, in January. So, so very new coming out of the studio and a typical of her work in which, uh, that the painting is, is overlaid over the top of, um, a printed portion or complete diagram or map from colonial era times. And in particular, uh, from uh, usually uh, more often than not from around the, uh, the Caribbean where, where, where she was born and, and, and brought up. And in this particular case, what we see is uh, the, the sort of figure that, that, that we see over the top is, is um, is is re, is is a, a sort of recurring motif that 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 she uses from uh, Dominican folklore. It's called a, a chiguapa, which is a, a sort of forest dwelling being, half human, half uh, animal, and uh, and, and a, a woman, a female uh, female character, which is very present, obviously here in a figurative sense, uh, but also. We, we, uh, Firole speaks about about the figure being embedded in the work through through a sense of gesture or through a sense of her own her her, her own sort of mark making, but the the Chiguapa uh, figure is typical of a number of characters who are like shapeshifters or are um, tricksters within within folklore, and often you find you find similar kind of characteristics ascribed to to different kind of characters within, um, often within like indigenous peoples or uh, or within folk, folk folklore or, or, or around the world. Uh, the Chiguapa is sort of signified through this mix of, 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 of sort of foliage and, um, and sort of animal-like sort of fur. And what links the three large paintings that are on showing up that will be on showing Artist Monday Nine are, are the figure is often facing two ways simultaneously. You know, you can tell from the alignment of the body that you know the legs are facing into the picture or out from the picture. Uh, but the the other assemblage of uh, uh, of foliage and plant forms and, and other adornments are, are often facing the other way. So there's something very particular about that idea of, 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 of looking forward and looking backwards simultaneously, if you like, of looking into the past and looking into, into the future. Uh, and Firolet speaks uh, about that as, as opening up a, a sort of sense of, of an opportunity and of imagining uh, a, a, a future that, 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 that might be. Um, it, it's, it's interesting, actually, by coincidence, today I was reading a, an article on BBC News app and it, uh, written by a, a, a Welsh author who lives in Japan who speaks about, uh, uh, in the, the article is specifically about a Welsh word, and you'll forgive my pronunciation, but something like uh, yes. which, which, yeah, which which sort of is, is one of those Welsh words that is difficult to uh translate in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a literal sense uh, in, 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 into English because it's more than just the literal translation. And similarly, this figure of the Chihuahua shares that, that there's the Portuguese word as uh, Sadade, which, which has a similar sort of 
sense of spirit, I suppose, in terms of a sense of longing for a place. And, but but it's it's beyond a mere nostalgia or or a, or a sentimentality for for a place. It's something more about about being rooted and belonging and, and and somehow trying to find that place where that where that sensibility I think I think can can, can emerge. And so that's a shared characteristic in 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 an, I say in a number of these rather sort of fantastical large scale paintings. Maybe if we move on to the next slide. This is another of those. Um, again, the figures there give you an idea of, uh, of the scale. You can see us all masked and, and, and gloved up in, in, in National Museum there. Again, here you see a, a Chihuahua uh, figure. And this time it's painted on top. The previous painting was on top of a, 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 a portion of a map from 1733 um, of the Bermuda Triangle. Here it's on top of a, a diagram of, um, of a, a, a building in, in New Orleans, a very sort of contested building that has undergone through, uh, undergone a number of functions since it was, since it was first built. And the nature of New Orleans as, as a site and a location of contested colonial histories, uh, something obviously key to, uh, key to, to, key to Firolet's, uh, key to Firolet's practice. Uh, maybe if we move, move on. So here you, here you see a collection of drawings. This makes the fourth new work in the exhibition, which, which um, will be this sort of cluster, this cloud, if you like, of 81 individual pieces. And again, typical of Firolet's practice, series of diagrams, illustrations, colonial era maps that are overpainted with abstract gestures, with various motifs, floral or jewelry or various adornments that are typically ascribed to, to women in some, some form or other. Wallpaper patterns, all of these sorts of uh, things that, that are in simultaneously linked to these contested colonial histories and, and, and the, the, the continuing legacies of those through to uh, a contemporary situation, often picturing or embedding the idea of a female uh, protagonist and, and an imagined future that, that moves beyond those, the, 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 those histories. So if we go to the next slide, there you see how, how, how these 81 images across a huge wall at National Museum are uh, are being installed uh, from Firolet Studio. There was, uh, it was, you know, um, it was set up in the studio and photographed, and then that becomes the the template whereby we can um, we we can install the work of these these eighty one individual pieces that just hover off 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 the off the wall surface. She wasn't able to come herself. No, none none of the artists for a variety of reasons, primarily you know, travel, either travel bans or travel restrictions, yes. uh, quarantine measures, countries that you're not allowed to travel to or from. Mm -hmm. not, none of the artists at this moment in time are, are going to be able to be, be with us, certainly not for the onset uh, and, and launch of the exhibition, but we continue to monitor that. Uh, as as our conditions change in the in, in the in the coming that's months. different from all the previous artist mundis, but um, very much so. Yeah. Great that it's yeah. carrying on all the same. Yeah, um, would we better? Um, yeah, uh, carry on. Give equal time to each of these artists. So um, the next is uh, Dineo Sesesh Uh She uh, she lives and works in uh, Johannesburg, uh, South Africa. And uh, Dinian's work, re her practice is really centered on, on, on the sort of socio-political notions of memory um, within both a personal sense, but in a, a, in a collective sense, and then intertwined within that, how we remember things, what we remember, what we choose to remember, how, how the ideas shift and priorities and importance and what is, what is held on to ch changes over time how we might revisit those histories to somehow, to somehow learn from that, but also what, what is it that we carry forward 
in, 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 into our present. And so the narration of that and what and who is represented and how things are represented are, are kind of intrinsic to her practice. Maybe if we move into an image. So really what, what is typical of Firolet's work is um, the large scale uh, sculptural installations, uh, installations of, often using very commonplace materials such as uh, earth and soil, uh, archival videos or, or found photographs, found objects. And so, and typically she, she is one of two artists in particular, the other being Prabhakar Pashpute, who typically would work in the gallery space and, and, and an initial plan, uh, an installation would partially evolve from working, working in the, um, working in the gallery space, almost akin to it, come up to a studio experience. So a very different way uh, and a very different dialogue that we've had to have with uh, Dineo because she's not able to, 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 to travel. So uh, Dineo is, is, is showing a chapter uh, across the whole of their, their, their gallery space and her complete installation comprises three, three, new, three new works. And what we see here is one of two rooms that are treated in this way, where the walls are uh, covered in um, a, a, a solution of, um, of earth that, uh, that is from, from the UK. One room uh, is from uh, uh, a particular sacred site or a, a site in Wales that has histories of, of different kind of spirituality. And the uh, another room has um, has a similar treatment, slightly different colour because of obviously the mineral content of the clay and of the earth, and that is from the confluence of uh, the River Severn and the River Avon, as being proximate, you know, through the um, through the Bristol Channel to, to 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 Cardiff and its former history of a port, but also a nod to the history of Bristol and. Uh, the history of Bristol as a port within within the slave trade, and all three works, uh, all three works include uh, there is a sculpt one one room is a sculptural installation, uh, the the big long space at chapter then is a complete install installation of a, approximately a thousand drawings, and then the far room you see this little ghetto blaster here. Uh, which is uh, has a will, uh, has a has a song piece, which um, is 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 a, a traditional folk song that 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 uh, Dineo has been working with musicians in Johannesburg and has made a new recording. So, if we move on, please, uh, here's yours truly and uh, and Hannah Firth from Chapter when we were when the works were first uh, been been unpacked. Uh, that some of the drawings. Um, and all of the all of the work again in the way that Firolais had these interconnecting uh, motifs and, and, and themes. Similarly with with Firolais, that all of the work is is dedicated to the Nedea uh, women of uh, Senegal who um, made the ultimate sacrifice and uh, and and committed suicide rather than be taken as slaves by. Uh, Western colonizers, and, and all of the all a lot of the works in terms of what they're made from the sculpture is made from a block of soil uh, from from an, an area just off the coast of Senegal, um, uh, just off the coast of Dakar. Sorry, in Senegal, uh, for any of you who've been there, uh, called the Ile, Ile de Gore, which has a, which is sort of infamous. Um, as um, as the departure point for the shipping of, of of Africans people across to the Caribbean and and into the U.S., so uh, all of the drawings are made as as you see here, and maybe if we move on to the next slide, uh, all of the drawings are made from soils that are found in different parts of Africa, either the countries where people were taken from or from uh, Senegal, where they departed Africa, or then uh, locations uh, in, 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 in the US. Um, and all of them 
in a variety of ways share this motif of of of, of water and uh, a really imp important quality of Dineo's work is is not only if you like the the research behind the work but how materiality and and image carry meaning so the soil itself intrinsically carry, carries not, not only meaning for the work but also carries uh, a sense of spirit and of, of, of belonging, and similarly, water as a as a as, as, as a motif for, uh, on one hand, a poetic metaphor, which we might say is about um, is about journeying and, and travel and distance, but also water as a, if we think of the many qualities or attributes that might be assigned to water, water as a cleanser, water as, a, as something that we might bathe in, water as a carrier, water that is rivers uh, and, and oceans that are constantly in flux, constantly uh, mo moving, moving things forward, are also connecting between places. So all of these become elements within, within the, the use of the soil, but also within the, then the drawing of, of that soil to evoke a sense of, uh, of, of landscape and, and, and a sense of, of, of water. And what you'll see in this huge installation, as I say, of over a thousand drawings is, is, is um, while it's not labeled, the, uh, the soil is from different locations, some in Africa, some different countries in Africa and different countries in, uh, in uh, different parts of the US. So from the Mississippi River, or again, from New Orleans in the same way as, uh, Firolet's paintings reference, some of Firolet's paintings specifically reference locations in, in, in New Orleans. And this is one of these op, one of these times that actually, and not by design or in the way that typically you might curate a group exhibition by examining thematics, what, it, what, what has emerged through all six artists are these set of ideas and themes that actually weave together and, and connect the different individual six artists in different ways. So I'm feeling very excited about how the exhibition, if you like the, the prize, to putting the prize to one side for a moment, the actual exhibition experience for visitors, be it virtually to begin with or then in person, we're hopeful for uh, as we move through uh, spring into summer. Uh, it will be coherent as a, as, as a, as, as a group of artists in, in conversation and dialogue with each other through their work in the way that um, a thematic uh, group exhibition might be. Maybe if we move through uh, the slides, please. So again, you see the, these vary in scale, but broad, broadly and not much larger than around A4. So they'll become these sort of fields of, 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 of imagery. Uh, that, that create this sense of, of, of immersion for, for, for us as, uh, as, as, as visitors, I think. I'm uh, conscious that time's rushing on, so um, uh, we're sort of two thirds way through our, our time. Okay. And uh, third, third then is Miro Kasumi, uh, lives and works in Yoka, Yokohama in Japan. Uh, he's a video maker and in slight contrast to other artists in the uh, exhibition who it's either very recent work or brand new work, uh, with Miro, the conversation evolved to, um, to present uh, a recent work from 2019, a three channel video piece. But Miro has taken this as an opportunity to completely reconfigure its, its installation. And I think a much more complex uh, installation than a typical three screens where you get uh, as, as it's previously been being presented. So for Artist Mundi, it's a mixture of, of, of two monitors plus two projection screens, each of which has their own soundtrack. And this is uh, what, what Mira's work really centers on moments of trauma and conflict, and in particular within Within ideas of national identity and and, and 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 value and belief systems, and in particular rooted uh, within uh, within within histories uh, within Japan and particular traditions in, in in Japan and ideas of honor 
and privilege, etc. So the piece we're presenting for Artist Monday, um, I say a three channel video work, uh, the central screen that you see at the moment is uh, Haiji uh, Kondo, a 19 year, 99 year old um, war veteran from the Sino-Japanese war uh, uh, during World War II. And he stands out within Japanese culture for a variety of reasons, uh, primarily because he was one of few, very, very few individuals who made public testament to the atrocities that he both witnessed and was complicit within uh, against the uh, performed by Chinese soldiers on uh, Japanese soldiers, sorry, on, on, on Chinese civilians. And so to make that public, the sense of dishonoring uh, uh, ancestors, dishonoring history, dishonoring your nation becomes sort of a very sort of pivotal one uh, uh, I, I idea that um, Miro has returned to through a, through a number of works, in particular, uh, those moments which are centered on, 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 on on, on that information that emerges out of out, out, out of times of conflict. So what you see in the central video is um, this incredibly fragile old man who is, as, is now having trouble remembering. And so he's, is, but he's, is very clearly troubled. So in, on one hand, it's incredibly poignant and you identify with him as a fellow human being in all, all his frailty. And, but also you, simultaneously you are horrified and, and, and repulsed by what he's recounting and, and the questions that have been put to him. So the complexity of that in terms of how it evokes and triggers and provokes with it within you as a, as, as, as a viewer, uh, something that on one hand you are all too... Um, all, all too aware of it uh, in, in terms of the very human nature of that, but clearly the, the sense of guilt and the sense of, 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 of almost seeking a redemption uh, that, 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 is, that is so sort of physically present in, 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 in the way that he, 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 he acts and, and speaks. This and strikes me as a case in point of the, uh, the rubric and, and, and sort of focus of Artist Mundi as social reality and lived experience. Um, very much so, and all, 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 three, all three artists that I've spoken about so far, you know, very, very much within that. And then flanked either side of that are, are teenagers who are, who are kind of honouring him for his bravery, if you like, in, in speaking out and speaking up in a very public way. And what you see is a series of workshops that Miro conducted with these group of teenagers who are then in public spaces in, 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 in uh, urban settings, in, in cities, in Tokyo, et cetera, uh, reading aloud uh, particular, portion, <coughs> excuse me, uh, particular portions of, of, uh, of Mr. Kondo's testament. So reclaiming that history for themselves and for those future and for their future generations. And I just included this image because this was this is a performance piece using a VR head consoles, which we were planning to present for Artist Monday. But this is one of those occasions where, uh, you know, because of obvious restrictions, we're not able to do. But we're very hopeful that we'll be able to present it toward the end of this year um, as part of the Experimentica uh, yeah. festival that, that is hosted in, in, in Cardiff. And I think that, that's it for those three. Yeah. yeah. We come out of the slides for a few minutes. And um, I, I just wanted to um, ask you a question about um, how you and, and the other um, people involved in the prize and the sponsors and so on see selection in relation to artist careers. You know, do, do you see this as being early career, uh, an early career representation or... Um, an acceleration of their careers, or, or are you looking at fully established artists? Where, where does the where does the prize and the uh, the exhibition sort of fit into the contribution to artists' careers? I think that's varied over the different iterations. Each iteration has its own uh, own flavour, own, own, own focus, and we are open to all 
all of the above. Um, in this year, uh, Artist Monday 9, we have, on one hand, the artists I've been speaking of are, well, they're not, they're certainly not emerging, uh, but they're not, you know, they're, 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 they're earlier in their careers. Uh, but then an artist that I'll come on to speak about, Carrie Mae Weems, is, is, is easily the most established and very senior and has significant bodies of work um, behind her and uh, a, a deserved reputation for, 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 for those bodies of work. So the prize is really about, uh, uh, about awarding to bodies of work and there's a variety of very clear deliberation that goes on uh, at the time in terms of who may win, 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 win the prize, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it isn't, it isn't necessitated by somebody being at the beginning or you know, much further on in their career. It's, it's open to all it, and, 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 and what begins to, um, I suppose in many ways sort of make sense within an individual artist practice, how the artist practice speaks within, within, the, within the wider context. In terms of uh, its locus in Wales, um, uh, Artist Mundi, um, do, do you, um, did you consider any kind of sort of guaranteed interview uh, scheme or, or positive uh, discrimination to, to look hard at artists from Wales? I think they've probably appeared in three or four of the nine iterations of Artist Mundi. So, uh, yeah, I think Bedweer Bedweer was back in Artist Mundi Seven was uh, was the last art artist, actually the last not only Welsh based artist, but um, but no, there's no. I mean, it's 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 not about it, it's as open to 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 anyone where wherever they're working, uh, and it's. A, the, you know, the discussions with the jurors. I'm sure I can only speak to Artist Monday Night, but I, I would imagine it would be similar for others. It's, it's, it's the work of the individual artist that speaks to, 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 the, to, to the moment, to the contemporary moment uh, in, in, in perhaps the most powerful and forceful ways possible. And of course, you know that those those discussions can be very 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 nuanced in um, in, in 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 content and 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 the thought processes that 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 that, that go alongside that. But I mean, certainly, there's there's no there's no unsaid or said block or obstacle to, 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 to any artists. I mean, there, there could, this year, there are no artists from Europe, for example, uh, for Artists Monday 9. Next year, it might, uh, for Artists Monday 10, who, who knows what that might be, you know. Well, let's look at the last three artists, um, and then um, we should open up to questions in about 10 minutes, so. Um, Certainly. Although one would like to be equal with all of these, um, we'll yeah. have a little bit faster. Yeah. So Beatrice Santiago Munoz, uh, she uh, lives and works in, in Puerto Rico, uh, uh, lives and works in San Juan in Puerto Rico. She makes film and video work and really combines various traditions of moving image, uh, be it documentary, ethnographic, working within the idea of expanded cinema and what moving, Im what moving image might be. Um, we're presenting uh, an installation of um, five film and video works, some made a couple of years ago and, and one uh, brand new, 16 millimeter. And th three, are, three have been presented on 16 millimeter film and two have been presented on, 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 on video. Uh, there's the installation in progress. And here are some, this is the, we're, as previous years, we're making a, a big publication, and this this is the spread of the, the the new film called about about falling. And typical of um, of, of Beatrice's work is that um, she works with the people and the communities and the histories of uh, of Puerto Rico, similar to Firole, you know. Uh, 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 
an island there in the in the Caribbean, the same as Furule, being born and brought up in the Dominican Republic. Uh, and really what she what Beatrice reflects on in these very sort of poetic, non-linear, non-narrative based films are see are, are often what is pictured are the ongoing legacies of, of those colonial histories, be it infrastructure that has been built by the US, such as military bases uh, into the landscape of, uh, of, of Puerto Rico, or the devastation that is, is caused by, uh, by, by natural forces. You know, the hurricane, for example, of a few years ago, we were presenting a, a piece of work called Godzilla that is specifically about the aftermath of um, of, uh, of, of, of the hurricane. Beatrice it also plays with, um, play, plays with film, makes you realize you're watching moving image. So that might be manipulations in camera when she's making the film. It might be manipulations as is the case with Godzilla of holding this glass prism in front of the, uh, in front of the projector. Uh, in, in, in this case, it's a piece of a Fresnel lens from a lighthouse that was destroyed. So the, the sculptural object that is affecting the projected image on the wall, if we move on to the next slide, please, that fragments and creates rainbow effects and scatters the image around the space is very much part of that. So you're aware of this physical manipulation. The new film about called entitled About Fall, Falling is on 16 mil film and we're instructed to let that film run until it starts to deteriorate, you know, it scratches and the dust, it becomes very, very, vis very visible on that. And as I say, all, all the, the installation as well with these overlapping images, overlapping projections, all of differing duration mean you're constantly seeing things, nothing is in sync as it were. So you're constantly seeing all these different images play out and making different connections through the juxtapositions of both image and, 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 and sound. But rooted to all of them is, is what is pictured are, are the people and the communities and how they continue to negotiate uh, those those legacies, be it in the built environment or through the ecological environment of, of, of that part of the, the Caribbean. And this is, uh, the, as well as the films, there is a, a display of these mirrored objects that, uh, that Firole uses that she holds in front of the lens when she's, when she's shooting a film. Fifth artist then, uh, uh, Prabhakar Pashpute, uh, lives and works in, uh, in, in, in Pune. In, in, in India. And Prabhakar is another of the artists rather like Dineo who typically makes work directly in the gallery and uses the gallery almost like a studio. And when Prabhakar made a research visit to Cardiff uh, uh, back at the end of February last year, uh, the conversation was about a very different kind of installation, obviously uh, pre the planning beginning there, pre-COVID. Pre, uh, pre, pre but what, what, what we've managed to do uh, and, 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 and great sort of imagination and ingenuity, what, what, when Prabhakar was in, 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 in Wales, he made a, a research visit to the mining museum in, in Swansea. And what he was particularly struck with were the ephemera and the, the, the banners of, of, of those mining communities and those the, 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 those, the, those, the, the, you know, the, the, pe the people and the, the, uh, from, from those industries. And that chimes with him because he's third, fourth generation family of, of, of miners. So there's that kind of personal connectivity. And so what he's taken, what, what you'll see in the Artist Monday show is a whole series of these gigantic painting, rather than drawing directly onto the gallery walls, which he, 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 he ordinarily would do, you see these gigantic, paintings and, draw and drawings on, uh, on unstretched canvas, acting almost like, 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 like banners. Um, and what is typical within that, the work becomes these observations and critiques of, of those mining traditions, on one hand, a celebration of the peoples and the communities, but, on the same, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, a, a critique of the exploitation of, of, of people the exploitation of the collectives, the despoilation of, 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 of landscape. And what you see often are these rather um, 
apocalyptic looking landscapes and these hybrid figures of, of machine and, and humans that are somehow ne navigating and negotiating this, 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 this terrain. And the sort of protest, I suppose, with, with it, with it, within that. And then last, but certainly not least, Carrie May Weems, who uh, lives and works in Syracuse and uh, New York City, in Brooklyn, New York City, in, um, in, in the US. Uh, Carrie is the, probably the, the most, certainly the most established artist out of the shortlist for art for, for, for in this year's uh, Artist Monday. Uh, with Carrie, we're presenting a mix of, of new work for the exhibition, uh, as, as, well as, uh, as well as some existing works. And Ka Carrie, I think it's fair to say, is probably understood as one of the most influential artists working in America today and has a 30 year history of um, investigating the black experience and the experience of Af African-Americans uh, through examinations of ideas of family, issues surrounding race and class, exclusion, representation, and, um, and the consequences of power and, where power and where power resides organizationally, institutionally with, within individuals, but also within, within ideas of, 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 of nationhood. And, and typically here, here you see a, a work almost at the point of completion at the National Museum, uh, a, a work called Repeating the Obvious, Re Repeating the Obvious which is this collection of differing scaled images of, of the same Im image, uh, uh, an, an, an ephemeral figure of this hooded black uh, teenager emerging out of, um, out of the, 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 the black ground uh, on, on which, from, from which he, he comes forward in, 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 into our space. And the title, repeating the obvious, I think uh, in many ways, says it all in terms of uh, what, what, what it is we're looking at and what it is we're prompted to, to, to think about when, um, when we are confronted by, by this installation. If we move on, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this is an, another piece, uh, a selection. You can't see all of the images that are presented, but there's a selection of work from a series called Constructing History, which are staged photographs. You see the paraphernalia of making the photograph, the studio lighting, the tripods, the cables contained within the image. And these grew out of a set of workshops that carry stage with, with students in Virginia, uh, reenacting and recreating moments of historic violence, uh, such as the assassinations uh, within American history, um, or mo mo and moments of conflict. Um, and so what they, what they do really is sort of bring into question our own relationship and act as a witness almost to, to these pivotal moments that not only affected American history, but the repercussions of which are uh, continue to this day, and, and, uh, but at, at the moment in time, um, you know, affected, uh, affected the world, the, the world uh, globally. The, the first image you saw uh, it was a new installation, but if we move on, at chapter we're 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 presenting a series of public works as well as um, her her photographic and video based practice. Uh, Carrie has a long standing uh, body of work uh, within public artworks, and this uh, what we're presenting are, are new pieces that uh, come out of. Um, a public art campaign she was commissioned uh, in, to respond specifically to COVID-19 and in particular to its effects in part on all of us, but also in particular, its, its particular impact on, on those communities, those black communities, black communities and, and communities of, 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 of color. So we're presenting a lot a set of large scale billboard works, one inside the cafe bar, one on the light box, and then there are a series of large scale AO posters, three different ones, some, uh, a new one, which is in Welsh, not, not, not in English, 
uh, that that people will be allowed to uh, to, to to take away. And uh, that's that's the last slide. The end of the slideshow. So um, I'll um, open it up. <laughs> Now, can I say, um, can I ask that uh, people go to speak of you on Zoom, if, if you're on Zoom and will be able to ask a question, go to speak of you and um, make sure your camera is turned on. Um, now, I can, I can take questions through chat, um, or if you would like to be called in to ask a question, just, uh, just tell me your, your name on the chat bar and I'll call you in. Um, and while we're waiting for some of those to come in, uh, I thought it was interesting that the last two artists in particular had interesting dialogues between their practice and the, um, the places where they're uh, exhibiting um, in, in the, um, the mining works, for example, you know, yeah. they're being shown in galleries where works about the exploitation of, uh, of mining communities and the, the environmental desolation of mining communities at times in the past in the Ronda have been shown. Yeah, and, and 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 not long ago we saw the uh, the mine photographs of the Beckers, for example, in those very galleries. Yes, yes. I mean, and and, and the, um, the 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 Karen May Weems is showing in uh, the gallery that's dedicated to photography and the, particularly yeah. the David Hearn collection. So interesting um, uh, conversations are, are going on there. I think in many ways, I think that that sort of layering of meaning uh, is, is very present and something that we'll be um, teasing out through a very robust public programme that launches uh, on March the 11th uh, with the first of a series of talks, panel discussions uh, involving the artists and contributions from writers, curators, other artists, thinkers from around the world, inc including those from, from Cardiff. So the first, first talk is uh, Firole uh, in conversation with Rachel Kent, who's in Aus Sydney, Australia, and, um, and Adiola Lewis, who is in Cardiff uh, yeah. uh, as well. So very yeah, much and... about making meaning of this international work, but how it, how it speaks to, to very local issues um, and concerns. Paul Vining's got a question, so can I can I ask Paul to come in, speak to us? Hello. Um, Hello. Thank you very much for your talk, Nigel, which I enjoyed very much. Um, yes. You focus, naturally enough, on Artist Monday 9, but I'm, I'm also interested in the work that Artist Monday does outside the actual competition. And looking at your website, I noticed that you offer a kind of mentoring service for artists. Um, both in terms of studio sessions and um, helping artists to write applications for grants and residencies and that sort of thing. I wondered if you could uh, tell us what the take up on that has been and how useful artists have actually found that service to be. Um, it, it, it's, it's part of a bigger reinvigoration of the, of the public programming and the, and the partnership connection that we've, in, that we've uh, instigated and prioritised over the last 12, 18 months. In particular, the studio sessions and um, the helped, you know, advice and guidance towards writing applications came in, in response to a series of um, uh, artist assemblies that we, we instigated uh, at the onset of, of COVID and, and of lockdown. And so it was us, one way in which we might be able to make a contribution back and to support to support artists in particular wales based or, or welsh artists in other parts of, of of the uk or europe we've had we so uh, they're they're ongoing um the take-up uh, has been pretty good i forget the numbers off the top of my head but we held a whole series of assemblies which we'll return to again come uh, autumn of this year. Uh, studio sessions are ongoing and what we've what they're doing during the run of the Artist Monday 9 exhibition is that we are other than the staff team uh, a number of the short shortlisted artists or some of the other contributors to the talk program for example are all taking part in a series of mentorship um, sessions which we're, uh, we're partnering with G39 to deliver. 
everything from the equivalent, if you like, of a masterclass through to feedback on, 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 uh, on, on, on their own work from, from the artists who are, who, who are in the show. So that, that, that's a particular extension within the context of the exhibition. And then once the exhibition closes, we'll, we, we are going to, we'll start again at, uh, the, the delivery through the, through, through, the, through the staff team and through others who we bring into that program paid Paid, paid fees for their for their contribution, obviously, um, to continue to support and give feedback and and to engage in the way that this virtual remote way enables um, when 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 things can't be open in in person. Um. Uh, Heike Rums has uh, said that she's very look much looking forward to being able to visit in due course and she's asked a question about whether, whether the experience of the pandemic and having to, to operate in the pandemic has sort of changed your view of what you think global art exhibitions can do and uh, whether you see opportunities coming out of it as well as challenges. Yes, well, it's, 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 it's certainly it's not being all negative. And what, one of the very positive aspects, we, we're always planning to change what in the past had been an artist forum, uh, which had been a one day event for five hours and a series of lectures. And that felt a bit stiff and a bit too formal uh, and actually didn't feel like it was properly connecting to just be sitting there passively in an audience and receive a lecture. So. The idea is that these in-conversation events have a degree more informality. The fact that they're going to be online enables a much wider reach in terms of potential audience, but also enables us to involve contributors uh, from around the world, which either for budget reasons or travel reasons, you know, we couldn't necessarily bring people from all of these places together in, in a room at the same time. They're going to be live streamed. They're also then after the live event, they're going to be available as podcasts, which further increases the opportunity for, for a, 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 a greater level of engagement and a greater reach. Uh, be it somebody who is sitting, if you like, metaphorically in the room next door to you or is on the other side or, or, is, a, uh, or is involved, even though they're sitting on the other side of the world. So there's something about that. That is something we were beginning to prioritize pre-COVID and really that has reinforced that the experience of COVID in that sense has reinforced uh, I, I think uh, arguably a more permanent change in how we are thinking of the delivery of certain aspects of our, our programming as a whole mo mo moving forward. Um, the artist Daniel Trevedi has uh, commented that he attended a number of the held space uh, yeah. Yeah. and found them extremely useful. I don't know if Daniel wants to come in, but uh, if you do want to speak, uh, j just speak, Daniel, if you wish to come in. And, um, Nothing other than to reiterate what I've already written, which is um, uh, it was a space specifically for Black and non-Black artists of colour to be able to come together. And uh, I personally found it an extremely useful and beneficial space. I'm very grateful for uh, that space being convened under the banner of Artists Mundi. Yes, thanks, thanks, Daniel. It's 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 lovely to uh, to to receive that 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 feedback. And uh, as as you may be aware, we've uh, secured uh, more 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 funding to to begin to take that initiative and, and work with the various contributors and participants to that. Those particular health spaces and 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 to develop to, ve to develop a new uh, a new face to, the, to to that to that program as well. So we're very much looking forward to to continuing that what we feel is very vital work, but also echoes and and resonates with the work of the shortlisted artists that we have on display. Um, a question of information um, from Rosalie Clement Hennion. Um, is, is uh, can you remember the name of the article about Hirais, uh, written by the Welsh author in Japan, so that uh, we can track it down? It sounds like an interesting one to follow up. It's if if 
I, I have the BBC News app on my telephone. Uh, I guess if you go to the BBC News uh, website, yeah. uh, there's an article there, and the, I forget it's a the journalist is a, I forget the woman's name, uh, but she's living in Japan at the moment, and um, the the headline title of the article is is uh, is something like the Welsh word that. Uh, li- the Welsh word that 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 can't be translated, something like this. Oh. And was this long long ago? No, uh, it, it's just just today. As I say, a moment of complete. Oh right, okay. When I was thinking about Firlay's work, and, and, and uh, a helpful contribution from Heike Roms, Lily Lily Crosley Baxter. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you, Heike. Um, Sean Williams uh, has asked, and uh, do come in, Sean, if you'd like to, but I'll put your question in case you don't want to. Uh, she's asked, when during the show will the Derek Williams Prize be awarded? We, uh, we haven't set a specific date yet for that, but it will be late April, early May. And the, the, I mean, very, it's a very important thing. And thanks, Sean, for bringing it up. It's, um, it's the second prize that comes out of the Artist Monday project uh, as a whole. And very important in that the work that is purchased or commissioned out with an artist out of Artist Monday is, um, f- forms really a, 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 core, a core aspect of the contemporary visual art collection for Wales. So it's one way in which Artist Monday continues to play a role in that legacy building for for, fu- for future generations. Uh, it's decided it's a partnership uh, between Artist Monday and uh, the National Museum. Uh, Nick Thornton, uh, the curator there, who 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 I'll be working with, and we always uh, invite in an external person. And this year, it's uh, Zoe Whitley, who is the uh, director of Chisnell Gallery in in London, is the uh, is the external. Uh, person who join, joins the panel to to deliberate on who is awarded that that prize, but we're making a separate announcement to uh, to the Artist Monday Prize to to really create more visibility for for that Derek Williams Trust Prize um, on on Artist Monday's new website. We we that will be launching in March. We have a complete new uh, uh, area specifically dedicated to that because it's a legacy that I was keen to give a greater representation and visibility to as the incoming director and one that we want to celebrate and continue to to, 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 to build upon. A bit of information requested by Peter Jenkins which is uh, how does one register to attend the online events? The they will be rather similar to tonight's event. Uh, there will be a, 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 an Eventbrite uh, ticketing, and that will be going up when we are launching our new website from, uh, from week commencing March the 8th. Right. Uh, so it, it may even be before that, but if I'm remembering my... Actually, because that doesn't give very much notice to register for March the 11th, so it's probably going to go up on our current website which will be revised uh, come, come March the 8th. Um, uh, Jane Salisbury's asked whether it will be possible to um, have gallery tours later in the, uh, later in the year, guided tours. Um, yes. Uh, where uh, she thinks that it's really an opportunity to bring out all sorts of uh, issues highly relevant to the, to the exhibitions. Yes, the, the, the online launch from March 15th will have video uh, walkthroughs of exhibitions, audio descriptions for those who are blind or, or partially sighted. There, there'll be voiceover narration. There'll be uh, audio audio files as well as as, as the equivalent of a uh, a virtual guided. There'll be like there's an equivalent of a virtual guided tour, with the idea then that they are structured in terms of the information and the flexibility to become in person events as 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 conditions allow. Well, thank you very much, Nigel. Um, uh, our time is is up. Um, oh, why have we suddenly gone on to... Sorry, something went wrong with my computer then. Um, uh, our time is up. 
Um, I was going to ask you one more question, which you can answer very quickly, perhaps, uh, which is, uh, when do you start thinking about Artist Monday 10? Uh, we started thinking about Artist Monday 10 about 12, 18 months ago. <laughs> very good. So it, it will happen. Um, yes. the, um, the, the full programme of your activities is going to be uh, available soon, Le Leanne has, uh, has put on. And um, uh, I'm now going to suggest that we just go over to um, uh, say thank you in, in, to Nigel in the usual way by um, uh, uh, going, to, um, uh, going to gallery view on your screen. And you'll be able to see everybody if people turn their cameras on. Uh, we can uh, we can have applause. Nigel, thank you very much for a, a good evening. Thank you, everybody. Uh, great to see the little number at the bottom of my screen in terms of attendance and uh, participation. So, thanks everybody for uh, spending the evening with with us. I think we had up to about um, two hundred people at, at oh, the moment, including multiple viewers and uh, YouTube. So. It, yeah. it, your time was merited, Nigel. Thank you very much. Well, it's, uh, it's, it, it's as I said at the beginning, it's a lovely invitation and delighted. And I look forward to welcoming everybody online to begin with, but then uh, in, in person later in the year, fingers crossed. Thank you.